Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church, back in the book of Jeremiah. We're going to pick it up in the middle of Jeremiah chapter 48 tonight, about verse 31. Remember, chapter 46, we began the prophecies against the Gentiles. And then 46, it was Egypt, but then, then we did chapter 47, and it, and it was against the Philistines, those migratory ones. And, and it said there, it said that when you hear, when you hear the noise, the, the rumbling of the horses and the chariots and the rumbling of the wheels, it says that the fathers will not turn back to their children for feebleness of hands. Why? Because the fathers are deceived also, so, so they can't even help their children because the whole family is deceived. And remember I told you, check out that word wheels and how it takes you back to Ezekiel chapter 10. Don't be surprised if Satan and his fallen angels do arrive in those wheels, those vehicles that are spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 1 as well as Ezekiel chapter 10. And then we came along to chapter 48 and that's, that's the Moabites. And you see, the, the Moabites, they, 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 made a, they made God very upset because they didn't allow Israel, the children of Israel, to pass through their land. And they're they the children of Lot, Lot being the nephew of Abraham. So they are of that Adamic seed. But it, it upset our father very, very much that they, they wouldn't let their cousins Israel pass through their land. And that they did many horrible things. First of all, they trusted in their own works and their own treasures. That they went to the caves and they worshipped their idols. And then that they even sacrificed their own children and they burned them alive in the fire. Sacrificed them to the god Molech practicing that religion of Chemosh, so that they, they had very, very many evil things that they were a part of. And God told them through the prophet Jeremiah, the spoiler is coming. And that was Nebuchadnezzar for them. It's the Antichrist in prophecy to us. And, and God told them that he, he's going to take over every city and not one city shall escape. And then that time will come when Satan arrives and that one world system will be perfected. And God said to him, he said, you've always been at ease. You've never been tested. You've never had to go up and you've never had to fight for anything. You don't stand up for anything. And he said, God said, how are you going to say that you're strong and that you're ready for the war? Because they're not ready. And if, you, and if you've never had to stand up against any type of adversity for our Father, you're not ever going to be ready. Because the whole, when the whole world falls after the false messiah, they are going to hate you because they won't understand why you won't worship God. Because they don't understand it's the false God. And, and, and it read in that chapter 48, it said that, that their, their arrogancy and their pride, which remember that was Satan's downfall in the first earth age, Ezekiel 28. It says their arrogancy and their pride is just going to be brought to nothing. It's not going to do them any good. So we're going to pick it up, Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 31, moving right along. So that's the word of wisdom from our Father. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your written word and for these prophecies of Jeremiah that tell us all the details of how it goes down in times. And we thank you for giving us this building, a place that we can come and fellowship in your name and to share your word with others. And we ask you to guide us through this study with your Holy Spirit. And we ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear to understand your word. And we ask that your words be spoken tonight. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, amen. So, all right, Jeremiah chapter 48, uh, verse, picking up verse 32, going right along with Moab here. Jeremiah 48, 32, and it reads, O vine of Sibma, that means fragrance, I will weep for thee with the weeping of Jazer. Thy plants or thy branches are gone over the sea. They reach even to the sea of Jazer. The spoiler has fallen upon thy summer fruits and upon thy vintage. That, that wine that you have that you were so joyful, it's not going to do you any good. And remember the spoiler, that is the Antichrist. Verse 33. And joy and gladness is taken from the plentiful field and from the land of Moab. And I have caused wine to fail from the wine presses. None shall tread with shouting. Their shouting shall be no shouting. It's not going to do you any good to shout or to cry out. God is putting an end to the idol worship, to all false religion. When Jesus Christ, when the true Messiah, Jesus Christ returns, it says that every knee will bow, they will all buckle. And that doesn't mean that right away necessarily every single person is going to worship Him and they're going to love Christ. But at that moment when He returns with all His power and glory, 
Every knee will buckle and every knee will bow. And there will be no such thing as idolatry anymore at that time. At the end of, at the end of the millennium, there will be still many who follow Satan. They fall right into the lake of fire and to be blotted out. And to, and to be blotted out. But when the true Christ returns, all idolatry is completely done away with. Verse 34. From the cry of Heshbon, that means the stronghold, even unto Elay Elay. And that, that, that word means ascension of God. So that this is taking us, this is right up even to the second advent. When, when tr the Messiah Christ, He is truly exalted. And even unto Jahaz have they uttered their voice. From Zoar, even unto Horonion. And that, that Zoar, that even means insignificant. And that they are, it is so insignificant, their idols that they follow. It, this is completely brought to nothingness. Even unto Horonion, as a heifer of three years old. For the waters also of Nimrim, that means pure, shall be desolate. As an heifer of three years old, that just simply means that they are completely helpless. And that Nimrim, that what they thought, their idol worship, their religion that they thought was so pure, is it, completely brought to desolation. Why? Because of the abomination of desolation. That's the desolator that Satan and his role as Antichrist. Verse 35. Moreover, I will cause the cease in Moab, saith the Lord, him that offereth in the high places, and him that burneth incense to his gods. And not only did they burn incense to their gods, that, like I said before, they, they worship Molech. They sacrificed their own children in the fire, a living sacrifice. And God would say in his word, he said, that never even came across my mind for you to sacrifice your own children. But that's what they did. Verse 36. Therefore, my heart shall sound for Moab like pipes. This is pipes like for a funeral. And the, because they're all spiritually dead. And my heart shall sound like pipes for the men of Kerhares. This means fortress of earthenware or potsherds. Because the riches that he hath gotten are perished. Verse 37. For every head shall be bald and every, head, and every beard clipped. This is a sign of mourning, of lamentation. Upon all the hands shall be shall be cut top shall be cuttings and upon the loin sackcloth verse 38 therefore therefore shall be lamentation generally that means all or completely upon all the housetops of moab and in the streets thereof and see the housetops that's where the watchman's supposed to be those that they observe that and that's what you are as a watchman you observe what's going on you study god's word and you sound the alarm you tell people how it's going to go down. Not because it's you that said it, but because God said it from His Word. But instead of being a watchman up on the housetops, like it's written in Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 3, they went up on the roofs to burn incense to their gods. Uh, continue, continue in that verse. There shall be lamentation generally upon all the housetops and the streets thereof. For I have broken Moab like a vessel wherein is no pleasure, saith the Lord. He's saying, just like you were an old vase that I didn't even care about, I'm, I'm going to drop you and you will be broken. That's how God feels about these idol worshipers. Verse 39. They shall howl, saying, How is it broken down? How hath Moab turned the back with shame? So shall Moab be a derision and a dismay to all them about him. That means that they'll be a laughing stock. And they're saying, how is this broken down? We, were, we thought that we were so solid in our religion. Everything was so, going so well. And you see, that since, since they left out God, God let them do it. That's what he says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. He says that I will send you strong delusion if, if you decide to go away from me. So God let it happen. And they sure didn't have Satan coming against them because they were doing Satan's work. So they thought they had it all figured out. But then it is all brought to nothing and they become a laughing stock when the true Jesus Christ returns. Verse 40. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, he shall fly as an eagle and shall spread his wings over Moab. And the he, like I said before, for at this time in history it would be Nebuchadnezzar. But for the future it's the Antichrist, Satan himself. And make a note, you can't help but think of Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, where it says that the false Christ, he will make a covenant for one week. And you know that, that's that one week of years, that's a seven year period. But Revelation chapter 9, verse 5, that's shortened to a five month period. And then it says, in the middle of the week, 
He will cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Why? Because there won't be any reason to, for a daily offering because he, will be, because he will say that I have returned. I am Jesus Christ. And that's what happens in that middle of the week, in the middle of the five months. But then it says that, and, and I'm going to be, that this is how it reads in the Hebrew. It's a little different in the English. But what it says in the Hebrew is on the, on the, wings, of, on the wings of abomination, the desolator arrives. And that, that you couldn't help but think of that when you see this verse. That abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. He arrives on those wings of abomination. And he claims to be God and sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Verse 41. Kirioth, that means cities, is taken. And the strongholds are surprised. Check out this word surprised in your, in your strongholds. It means manipulated. And they are so easily manipulated by the miracles and the prosperity that Satan will bring. And the mighty men's hearts in Moab at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. And in those labor pangs. And, and what's coming to birth? The birth of a new age. As it, as it talks about it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. It says that when people say peace, 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 sudden destruction comes upon them as, as, a, as of a woman in labor. Those labor pains where, where they get closer and closer together. And that's how things will happen. Things just all of a sudden everything starts happening. Boom, boom, boom. Those labor pains get closer and closer. And it's getting closer for that time for the false one to be cast out. And when he and then when he is cast out, then two and a half months later, the true Jesus Christ returns. We all turn into that spiritual body. And that new age will come about. And, but remember, the third earth age will not even be, the earth will not be rejuvenated until the end of the millennium. Verse 42. And Moab shall be destroyed from being a people, because he hath magnified himself against the Lord. If you want to be destroyed, just think that you know more than God. Think that you have what it takes without God, and you will be destroyed. Verse 43. Fear and the pit and the snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitant of Moab, saith the Lord. Verse 44. He that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that getteth up out of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For I will bring upon it, even upon Moab, the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And no matter where you turn, you're going to get caught. Why? Because you left God out of, the, out of the equation of your life. And remember that, yeah, they worship false gods at this time, and many do even today. But remember, anything that you put above God, you make a priority above God, that becomes an idol to you. So don't ever put anything above God. There's nothing more important than serving our Heavenly Father. And this, this time of visitation, that time of wrath and vengeance, that's spoken of eight times in the book of Jeremiah that we've read. And it's only mentioned four other times in the whole Bible. That vengeance is coming, that time of the visitation when Christ returns. Verse 45. They that, fed, they that fled stood under, stood under the shadow of Heshbon because of the force. Remember, Heshbon means stronghold. They thought well, we should have been just fine with how strengthened we, all, we were in our religion, in this church system. But a fire shall come forth out of Heshbon and a flame from the midst of Sihon. Sihon means warrior. They thought they were prayer warriors. They thought they were warriors for God. But it was for the false God. And shall devour the corner of Moab and the crown of the head of the tumultuous ones. So much in this verse. What is, what is our Heavenly Father? Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. Our Heavenly Father is a consuming fire. And then 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10. It says that all the elements, that's the rudiments, all the wickedness will be done away with with that consuming fire when Jesus Christ returns. And then also you have, you have, you have see their corner, their chief cornerstone is a false god, is Molech, Chemosh. But what is your cornerstone? It's Jesus Christ, the Messiah that was crucified for us and resurrected. And Psalms chapter 118 verse 22 says that the one that was rejected has become the head of the corner, and that is Jesus Christ. And the, and they have the and the crown on the head of the tumultuous ones. Does that make you think of Revelation chapter nine, where you have the locust, that locust army, which is the fallen angels, and also mixed with the Kenites, where it says that they have crowns on their heads, 
And you know from Revelation 13 and 17 that Satan will bring ten kings with him, those supernatural ones. So much prophecy just in this one verse. Verse 46. Woe be unto thee, O Moab. The people of Chemosh perish. And remember, Chemosh means the subduer. For thy sons are taken captives and thy daughters captives. Verse 47. Yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in the latter days, saith the Lord. Thus far is the judgment of Moab. This is saying that if God's given them a chance. He's saying, look, if you repent and you return unto me, then you will be saved. It doesn't matter what people you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you study His Word and you serve Him, then you will live forever. So God's given them a little chance here. He's saying, look, come out of it. And I want to mention that because there's a people we're going to talk about later where God doesn't even give them, He doesn't even give, He doesn't say it out loud that you have an opportunity. Even though everybody does, every single person has that opportunity. But there's a person that we're going to read about tomorrow. God doesn't even give them these, these words of encouragement. We're going to go just a little bit into chapter 49 and we're going to cover the Ammonites. The Ammonites are the brother of Moab, so also from Lot, from, from, a, from a different person. You get from the, from the other daughter of Lot. There's two daughters of Lot. One of them came Moab, one of them came Ammon. And you can read that in Genesis chapter 19, verse 38. So this is the Ammonites. Let's read about it. Chapter 49, verse 1. Concerning the Ammonites, thus saith the Lord, Hath Israel no sons? Hath he no heir? Why then doth their king inherit Gad, Gad being one of the twelve tribes, and his people dwell in his cities? And what, what is their king? Their king is a false god, where your God, our God, is Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard in Rabah. Rabah means great or powerful of the Ammonites. And they, are, they think they're so powerful in their religion, in, the, in their false idols that they worship. And it shall be a desolate heap, and her daughter shall be burned with the fire. Then shall Israel be heir unto them that were his heirs, saith the Lord. That shall be desolate once and again, because the abomination of desolation, the false Christ, took them right into his hand by his miracles, by the peace that he brought to the whole world. And, and, and don't forget how we just talked about it on Sunday, Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 28 where the priests, the sons of Zadok, those that stand up against the false Christ. God says, don't give them any possession, no give them any inheritance. I am their inheritance. So when you serve God and what, when the rest of the world follows Satan, you stand against him, you inherit everything. And it doesn't matter who, what people you are. If, if you do, if you serve the Lord in that way, if you do the right thing, then you have an excellent inheritance. Where these people have no inheritance. Verse 3, Hallow Heshbon, that stronghold, for Ai is spoiled. That means a heap of ruins, and that's what they become. Cry, ye daughters of Rabah, gird you with sackcloth. Lament and run to and fro by the hedges or the borders. For their king shall go into captivity, and his priests and his princes together. Remember that, that church system that they were so solid in, where, the, where they had princes, they had priests. They, had, they, had, they called themselves prophets. They called themselves reverend. Even though you're not supposed to revere anyone but God. But, and they, they followed that church system to the letter when they could have been following God's word to the letter. Verse 4. Wherefore glorious thou in the valleys, saying, Why are you glorying in the valleys, that flowing valley, O backsliding daughter? And check out this word flowing. It's very interesting. It means to, to freely flow. So they had, they had so much freedom. We can do whatever we want. You, you, hear, you hear it today. Oh, it's okay to be homosexual. It's okay to be transgender. All that matters that you love God. And we're all the same. It doesn't even matter if you accept Christ. We all worship the same God. Well, that is all a lie. And that's the way of Satan. But this, this word flowing, it means freely. But it also, it also figuratively, it means to waste away. And that's what they do with their freedom. Spiritually, they are just wasting away into nothingness. What did they do? That trusted in her treasure, saying, Who shall come unto me? No, no one can, can take us down. We got it all figured out. They, they left God out of the equation. They forgot that God sits on the throne and He can do whatever He wants. 
And if you worship a false god, you will be broken down. You will waste away into nothing. Verse 5. Behold, I will bring a fear upon thee, saith the Lord God of hosts, from all those that be about thee. And ye shall be driven out every man right forth, and none shall gather up him that wandereth. And no one's going to go looking for you. No, no one's going to care. And you can't help but think of Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 3, where you had Pasher, the son of Emmer. Pasher means freedom. And you can just see how God's word just flows. But Pasher, the son of Emmer, he, he hated Jeremiah because Jeremiah was speaking the words of God. So what did Pasher do? He, threw, he hit Jeremiah, then he threw him in the prison. But then what did Jeremiah say? He said that your name is no, gonna, no more going to be called Pasher, but you will be called Magor Mishabib. And that means terror on every side. And that's how it is. When, when you think that you're in freedom, when you leave God out of the equation, all of a sudden you got terror on every side of you. One more verse to complete this study. Verse 6. And afterward, and afterward I will bring again the captivity of the children of Ammon, saith the Lord. Once again, God's giving them a chance. He's saying, just return to me, and, and I will accept you. And just as, as our study on Sunday, it doesn't matter any sin you've committed at this time. If you truly repent out of a sincere heart, then you will be forgiven, no matter what people you are. So God is so good to us to give us that forgiveness when we seek it. And once again, God, God mentioned, He said, look, come back to me. But the next people that we're going to read about, which is Edom, God doesn't even give them that, even though the, anyone can repent if they come. But God doesn't even say anything about, like, if you repent, return unto me. He doesn't even say that. Tomorrow we're going to go to a very interesting study on Edom. Edom. Edom being Esau, which is Russia of today. And we'll document that tomorrow in the Scripture. But so much prophecy that has to do with that, with that power of Russia. And so, so much to know about exactly how the end time goes down. So we'll get into Edom and Esau and a little more tomorrow. Let's go to our Father's throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your written Word and for the wisdom of Your Word that gives us the instructions on, on how to be a good example to others. And we just ask You to continue to guide us with Your Holy Spirit to, to get wisdom, not just for us, but so that we can share it with others. And we thank You again for giving us this building and place that we can learn Your Word and that we can share Your Word with others. Thank You, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, Amen. This was recorded at Smyrna Christian Church, 1623 North Purdom, Kokomo, Indiana. Come join Pastor Jesse Sisk on Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. God bless. August 8, 2019.